We're coming into the corner, we're in fifth. I don't want to be in fifth. Third, second, and now I have the correct drive out of the corner. My name's Mick, I drive cars, and today I'm going to teach you how to use manual mode on an automatic transmission. There's three main things that I really want to talk about in this video as it pertains to manual mode. First one is why you would use it. What's the point? Um, you've got an automatic transmission anyway, it's going to change gears for you. What is the benefit of using manual mode? Then I'm going to talk about when you would use it, because in my personal opinion, there's certain times where it's more appropriate to use manual mode over automatic. The last bit we're going to get into is how to actually use it. What are the controls that you can use for manual mode? A lot of people were asking me the question of, Mick, we always see you changing gears manually, but your car's a, an automatic, a DCT. So why? Why are you using manual mode? How do I use manual mode? What's the benefit? One final thing we'll get into is the different types of gearboxes. Manual mode is slightly different in all three of those. I'm a big proponent of understanding how your car mechanically works in order to have the best output when you're actually driving it. So let's get into it. For us to understand the why we should use manual mode on an automatic gearbox, we have to understand the limitations of the automatic gearbox. If the automatic gearbox was always perfect, we'd never use manual mode, right? So let's try to understand what it is about the automatic gearbox that frustrates, right? So the automatic gearbox has three main inputs to know when to change gear and what gear to be in, right? The first one is your driving mode. The second and third inputs are your brake and your throttle position. So the automatic gearbox doesn't have a camera. It doesn't know what's coming up. The only way it can predict what's coming up is based on what you're doing. So why would we use the manual box? Well, in certain performance driving or spirited driving, the gearbox doesn't always make the best decision. And I'm gonna give you a demonstration of that. I'm in automatic here, let's see what the car will give me. So it's kept me in fourth. I really wanna be in third here. Through this corner, I don't feel like I have the control because I'm not in the correct gear. So now it's shifted me up to fifth because we're going downhill and it thinks I'm taking it easy. But now I'm braking and it hasn't put me into fourth. It's still got me in fifth. When I'm in such a, a high gear, I just feel like I'm coasting. And it's, a, it's not a nice feeling. I don't feel like I'm in control of the car. But now I'm coming into this corner and I really wanna be in third here. It's put me in fourth. Would still really like to be in third. It's just never in the right gear. And now it's put me in fifth in the middle of a corner. I don't wanna be in sixth, guys. I'm in sport mode. I want control over the car. Now this corner, I really need third. Nah, it's, had, it's got me going through in fourth. I don't like it. I really don't like it. You get the worst of all worlds because when you just wanna drive spiritedly, but not crazy, it doesn't give you enough. But if you need to overtake someone and you threaten the throttle, suddenly I'm in, <laughs> that's not what I want. So before we get into how you should use manual mode, it's really important that we familiarize ourselves with the controls that you have for manual mode. So to get into manual mode, we need to move the gear lever into M. The way it works in this car is that's drive, and then you push it over to the side and you have manual, right? You can then, you can see on the screen, we're flashing manual. You can then push the lever forward to switch down the box, or you can pull it back to switch up the box. Some cars are different and they'll be the other way around. I think this is the correct orientation because when you're accelerating, your, your inertia is backwards. So you wanna pull back to shift up. You also have the paddles. So in this car, the paddles are fixed. They're not connected to the steering wheel. Um, you've got one that says minus, which will help you shift down. And you've got one that says plus, which will help you, help you shift up. I wanna touch a little bit on the RPM and why it's important. So in the screen, you'll see your RPM will go from zero all the way around. On this car, it goes to six and a half. Power will build as you go up the rev range, all the way up to six and a half. Now, what a lot of people don't talk about is that the responsiveness will also build. Um, the, the eagerness of the engine and how quickly it responds to your throttle input 
is also quicker at higher RPMs. So for sporty driving, you generally want to be in the higher RPMs, at least above 3000 or so. Your RPM directly relates to your fuel economy. The lower your RPM, the better your fuel economy. That's why regular modes in most cars are set up to keep themselves as low in the RPMs as possible. But for sporty driving, fuel economy is not our highest priority. Our highest priority is power and responsiveness. And those increase as you go up the RPMs. How do you actually use the manual mode? Well, first of all, you put your car in a sportier mode. I'm gonna go sport. Then you shift that gear lever over to manual mode. And now you're in control. If you push forward, the car will shift up. If you pull back, the car will shift down. If you pull the paddle, the car will shift up, up and down, other way around. You guys get the point. It's not super complicated. The super complicated part is getting the most out of it. It's really easy to upshift because you just have to be on the gas. But when you want to downshift, so for example, if I'm now on the gas and I downshift, there's like this slushy, horrible feeling. It doesn't feel good. So you want to work with the box. You want to upshift on the gas and you want to downshift on the brakes. That's one really key thing. And you want to keep yourself in a good gear in the power band, somewhere where you've got a decent amount of power, decent amount of responsiveness, and you're looking forward to the corner that's coming up and trying to match your gear to the corner. It's really as simple as that, to be honest. I'm, I've got a corner, I downshift, I power through the corner, I upshift. It's, it's really easy and it makes your driving so much smoother when it comes to spirited driving. Again, downshift for the corner, tip it in, get through the corner, upshift, nice and easy. Sometimes you'll come into a really tight corner and you'll need a double downshift. So here we are, just an example, one downshift, two downshift, and I've got tons of power. <laughs> uh, these, these group of corners here seem to come up in every one of my instructional videos, but I'll show you. We're coming into the corner, we're in fifth. I don't wanna be in fifth, third, second, and now I have the correct drive out of the corner. This corner, third is nice. The automatic gearbox would not have chosen those gears. So it's just really nice to be in control and to have an extra level of engagement with the car. It's one more thing I can influence, right? These two corners are super tight. So what would I do? Do I want to be in fourth? No. I want to be in third, second. That gives me lots of responsiveness coming out of the corner. Same here. That could have even been first, but first there's a bit jerky sometimes, so we don't always use first. I'm on a national speed limit road. I can do 60, but I'm doing 40. If I wanted to accelerate, I could just mash the throttle in fourth. You get some good acceleration. The fact that I was downhill helped me a lot. But let's say I was at the same speed and I wanted to really accelerate. Well, what I would do is I would drop a gear and then I would go for it. You just get so much more acceleration by being in the correct gear. Here again, I've got some extra control because I'm in the right gear. I'm in third, I've got a good amount of power. We'll go up to fourth bit of a corner, we'll go back down to third, I'm off the gas for that, back on the gas. This is a nice corner, I think third's ideal here, so I'll stay in third. Coming out, we'll go down to fourth. When should you use the paddles and when should you use the shifter? So this is really personal preference, guys. A lot of people are different about this. Some people love using the shifter, some people love using the paddles. In my opinion, if you're in sporty driving and you've got your hands at nine and three, which is where you should have them, the paddles are really convenient because you can shift. Without moving your hands. This is even better. If you've got paddles that are attached to your steering wheel, it's really nice because you can even shift in a corner so that's really cool. Well, look, I'm coming into a corner, I downshift, I've got the right gear, and then I upshift on the way out. 
it just gives you a little bit of extra control and engagement with the car. If you want tons of power, you just go down a few gears and then you've got all the power you want. Equally, if you want it to be a little bit more chilled out, you take a higher gear and now suddenly it's a little bit more chilled out. You can smash the throttle and not that much happens. So you just get an extra layer of control over what's going on with the car rather than the automatic gearbox doing it for you. So when should you use manual mode in an automatic transmission? Well, it's gonna be any time you're in a sporty driving situation. It's gonna be whenever you can make better decisions about the gear that you should be in than the box can make itself. So generally this will be if you're out for a fun drive on a country road or if you're on a track. When we talk about where to use automatic mode, this is a prime example. We've got a national speed limit, 60 mile an hour. We wanna enjoy the car. And if the gearbox is making decisions for us, I don't have that extra level of engagement with the car. Even though I'm in fourth the whole time, maybe for this corner, I wanna slow down and go into third. I can do. I don't have that control if I'm in automatic mode. And now maybe we've got a straight and I don't need to burn lots of petrol and I don't need to make lots of noise. So we go down to six, but I can make that decision. I'm in a better position to make those, I'm in a better position to make those decisions than the car is. I know this corner here is very exciting and it's a long left-hander. So I want third for this one. Nice RPMs. We tip it in. Oh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> But you see, the auto box would have never made that decision. It, it's not in a position to because it doesn't know what's coming up. Oh, I do love this car. So for country lanes, it's a big deal for me because auto box puts me in fifth, but I'm coming up to a corner. I'd really like to be in third for a bit of responsiveness around the corner and also for the right gear to go through <laughs> the national speed limit sign. But now, even myself, I've moved it down to six because this is a straight bit of road. There's nothing exciting. A corner comes up, I drop two gears again. Bit of responsiveness. There's another corner coming up. I'm gonna drop another gear because I want the most responsiveness as I go around this corner. I wouldn't wanna go around this corner in sixth. We've gotta look at the different gearboxes. You have your CVT transmission, you have your standard automatic or your torque converter, and then you have dual clutch gearboxes. That could be DSG, DCT, Porsche PDK. It's all the same thing. It's a dual clutch gearbox. Now your CVT gearboxes, you can almost ignore because they don't really have gears. Um, I could get into this in super in depth, but basically the gears are faked. You can almost ignore them, right? It doesn't really matter what gear you're in if you're in a CVT box. The automatic gearbox and the DCT box are quite similar, but there's some key differences. Um, an automatic gearbox will shift up and down more, more irregardless of your inputs. So if you're on the throttle and you shift down, an automatic gearbox will be happy to do that. The DCT box um, has to pre-select which gear it's gonna go into. So it needs to know which gear to shift to. So throttle and brake are really important in a DCT box. You have to make sure in a DCT box, if you wanna go down a gear, you're off the throttle and ideally on the brake because that gives a signal to the DCT box to pre-select that lower gear. Otherwise, if you're on the throttle and you downshift, there will be a delay. So you have to work a little bit more with dual clutch boxes um, because they have to pre-select the gear. Similarly, you can't be on the brake and then upshift because it will be really slow because it doesn't understand your input when you do that. 